Um, what? What's going on everybody? DJ Goham here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to new mods for Farming Simulator 19. Today I've got nine mods for you. For all platforms, we've got six new and two updates. And for PC and Mac, we've got one new. Let's check it out. First up today, we've got a brand new model from Case IH. This is the Case Vestrum series. This is a new model, small tractor. So this takes up the place of, well, I don't think we really had it. The 4T55, I guess this is what the takes the place of. Doesn't even have as much horsepower either. But this is cool. This is awesome because now lovers of Case can finally have a new model, small tractor. Let's check this out in the store. Where are you gonna find this? This is gonna be found well, you said it, in small tractors, because it's a case, it is going to be some of the first ones. Right here it is, the Case IH Vestrum series. Placed right beside the 1455, it's about double the price to start with. And we click on it, we've got a couple different colors to options as well, simply because this is a mod. This is not by Giants, this is Red Cat 3D and Lucas 2002. We get the Case IH Red, we get the Black Edition, we also get a Gray, which looks really good by the way. We also get the 145 years of Case Excellence. We also get the Municipal, so if you guys are doing um, road work, something like that, you could use this right here and it would look the way it's supposed to. And Red Cat Rot, there you go. Now, of course, around here, we just prefer the Case IH design color. Right here, I believe the design color is the front loader setup. And yes, it is, so we'll be getting into that shortly. Couple options here. Configuration, weight carrier. We also have 500 kilogram weight, 1,000 kilogram weight, and a front three point with a PTO, baby. Yeah, thank you. Wheel brands, we have Trelleborg, we've got Michelin, yes we do. We have Midas, oh yeah. And we have Nokians as well. The Trelleborg and Nokian tires have the new wheel style that was included with their last mod, which is kind of neat. In Trelleborg, we have standard, wheel weights, wide tires, wides with weights, narrows, rear twins, and twins all around. Every single tire option, with the exception of trips, is in here. Look at that, that looks awesome. Even the narrows look great. This thing's cool right here, I'm loving this one. If we go up into Michelin, we only have one set of tires and that is the wide tire. So here's your Trelleborg normal, here's your Michelin wide. Now, we also have Midas tires as well. In Midas we have standard, and we've got the big boys, the wide tires. These things are massive. And of course, like I mentioned before, we also have the Nokians. You guys wanna to put together like a Roadworks? There you go. That's your Roadworks right there. It's a good looking tractor. Let's reset everything. Going in, we have interior color as well. We have the interior color gray. We have a gray with the carpet, which gives a nice little red outline to the carpet, which is nice. Also have beige interior. Beige interior with carpet, which gives you the beige outline as well. And then back to gray again. Really like that uh, gray with carpet, it looks good. Beacon lights, you get your option of none, left, right, or standard, which is everything all together. Engine setups, we have the CVX Drive 100. It's gonna give you 100 horsepower. We have 110, 120, 130 horsepower even options. So 100, 110, 120, 130. The number will reflect the horsepower. So you don't have to look around for that. Front loader setup, we got a couple different ones. Front loader, no. We have standard, which is gonna be your stole. We also have the Allo console as well. So if you have the Allo console synth, you can use this and make it look right. Now this is your design color. So for example, if you want that to be, well it says black edition, but it's onyx. If you want it to be that case red, go for it. You have a big red uh, thing on the front. You could do gray. However, gray is not a standard color in game. So there's no way to match that. 145 years edition, you could do that chromed out red. You could do the orange as well. Or if you want to go with the red cat, you could do that as well. It's a little bit darker red. I think that looks very, very good. What else do we have? Mirrors inside. No, well, yes. So we're gonna add an extra mirror on the right so you can see behind you, very cool. And that is all of the customization for this tractor. So right here, we've got one all the way decked out, big engine with uh, duels. And then this right here is a blacked out edition with no other options other than the wide Midas tires and the front loader. This is the stole front loader in the onyx color, matches perfectly. Man, fantastic model. Yo, 
I want to use case again. Let's do it. Next, we've got something that only a mad scientist would come up with. This is the Roto Arm by SMI Modding Team. Um, something else that they are behind as well as the Grisoni headers that fold in half. So they're used to coming up with different things. This is the kind of mod that I want to see in Farming Simulator. People ask me all the time, what do I want to see next? I want to see stuff I didn't know I wanted or needed. That's what I want to see. And this right here is exactly it. Just a stint base layout. It's just the front piece. You get a front piece with an additional front PTO and an additional front three point. And you get one of these right here. Look at that, that's so cool. Um, this is recommended to use with three point attachments in the back. Now it is shown off with plows in the back. However, all the plows go further over than they're supposed to. So there's a whole lot of overlay between both of these, which I don't like. So I would much rather or much more so recommend maybe using a flat rear plow and then on the front using a cultivator like a front pack cultivate well that would be backwards wouldn't it use a front plow <laughs> does this exist um no but you could do all kinds of stuff with this you really truly can um one thing that i've seen some other people doing is using this as a uh, cultivator and we've got a power harrow on there now but you can throw a cedar over there throw a cultivator in the back you do two things at one time. Now, my question is, can we get this to raise up and smack over there? So let's jump in and let's check out how to use this guy. So first off, you can see we've got all kinds of stuff. We're going to go ahead and detach the plow from the back and we're going to pull this straight up. Is this Massey a, uh, showing off something? Maybe, maybe not. We shall see. Let's turn on our help window on. You know what I'm talking about. It says fold the tool. So we're going to fold the tool. There we go. Folds it up. Sticks it right in the middle and brings it down. So this is how you transport it. Now, my concern would be tipping. And we're getting a whole lot of body roll. Yeah. You do some tractor shows with this thing. Yeah, boy. Uh, it does say plowing and power harrows can be done in one pass. No sub or no soil compaction and structure delay because they combine operations, saving time and diesel fuel because, well, because you can do two things at once. It does say recommended 280 to 400 horsepower. Who in the world is using three, it says working with a recommended three meter. Who's using three meter implements with a 400 horsepower tractor? Get out of here, three meter implements. <laughs> Let's see, lower tool. So we can raise and lower the tool right there. Again, if we unfold, we can move that. And that's all well and good. However, if, oh, we can scoot it in and out. That's kind of cool. What if we go over here to L1? What can we do here? Oh, if I push down, it's bringing it this way. Look at that. What you know about that? <laughs> that's awesome. All right, so let's hook this up because I want to see what we're up to here. So I'm going to take this planter, if I can get it over there. There we go. We're going to take this planter. We're going to take this cultivator and we're going to use them in conjunction with each other. I'm going to go ahead and bring that over. So that is as close as it can be. And I want to hire a worker just to see what's going to happen here. Is the worker going to turn around just fine? Or are they going to cause us some serious, serious issues? First off, we got to make this field something different. Here's something interesting. I can't get the power harrow to work. Check that out. Power harrow is just not working. No matter what I try to do, it works for like a split second and then doesn't work anymore. So I don't know if it's something I'm doing. I've read up on everything. I've made sure that everything's lowered when it needs to be lowered. But so this is the lowered view and that's the raised view, but it's just not happening. So if you guys can figure this one out, let me know. But I am stumped.
If you want to try this one out for yourself, this is going to be found in tools and in miscellaneous. And right here it is, the Roto Arm for 13500 It's cheap. Good. There you go. Nine. It says nine mile per hour speed. Not sure what that's all about. But nonetheless, it says it needs 300 horsepower in game so just find yourself a 300 horsepower tractor this one might be a little bit overkill the one thing about the rotor arm is it does come with its own power harrow which will work however i've tested quite a few and i can't seem to get any of the other ones to work so the fact that it has its own that works is great but if you want to use for example like we are trying to use the amazon stuff and that doesn't work well then that's just not good so just keep an eye out for this one. Next up, we have the KPE 3.8 and the SP8. These are designed primarily for pre-sowing, which is cultivation, because these are going to be found in cultivators. At least one of these is. Uh, we have a 3.9 meter working width, anywhere between 75 and 150 horsepower required working speed, 12 to 15 kilometers per hour, which is interesting. Also with these, they're John Deere colors right now. However, they don't start at John Deere Colors. Let's check them out in the store. Boom, we're gonna jump in and we're gonna go into cultivators to start with because one of the things can be found here in cultivators. We are gonna go over and find this guy right here, the Lizard KPE 3.8, $3,500, 75 horsepower required, 3.9 meter, nine mile per hour working cultivator. Yep. <laughs> so it's not a three meter. Color selection, we've got red, you've got green, which is Kind of green blue crimson you also get yellow we get a yellow and red which i think looks really good then we get the john deere colors what would be nice is if uh we had complete control over all these colors we could change them well, whatever color we wanted to then in design we have rollers or we have roller spiral so you could choose either one of those that you want that's the first piece of equipment the second piece of equipment is going to be found here in tools and in miscellaneous and this is something that's kind of neat because we don't have a lot of these in game. Plus with this now, we might be able to do other things as well. This is the SP8. What does the SP8 do? Well, this is designed for preparation of a wide assembly of two of the cultivators. So you can put two of the cultivators together again, same colors, blue, blah, 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 all the way through. All's good, 1700 bucks, so very cheap. And you can hook them up. So if we back it in, Hook them up to here. We can hook up two of these, or you can hook them up in line. Maybe you're trying to go down the road. Unhook, hook them all together, and you're good to go. As a matter of fact, I say hook them all together. There's no way to hook up to the back of this. So that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> Looks like you're moving one at a time. But you could do other things with this as well. I'm sure you guys can use your imagination, maybe pairing it together with this model right here. Hooking at the back, maybe you can come up with something kind of cool. Maybe using the front lifter on the back of that, going from a normal trailer hitch to a three-point, you could really use your imagination when it comes to that. Next, we have the German Cow Barn. And this is a German cow shed with pasture. Price is 550, 550. It's so expensive for, for 100 cows? Wow. Manual light, manual net, seasons ready, snow roof. And there's no snow on there yet. That seems to be a problem here lately. The lights and the windbreak net can be operated on the electrical boxes that are attached to the wall. The interaction marks can be switched off and on in the game menu, just like all of them. You don't have to have these marks right here. But if you want to milk, slurry, manure is going to be over there as well. And every door opens, which is great. Let's turn on our help window because there are a lot of things that can be done here. First things first. We're gonna go here. This is where you buy your animals. So we're gonna buy, yeah, we'll get 10 of them, why not? Let's open the gate. First off, the top opens and then the bottom opens, which is so cool. Oh man. Um, this is an interesting one though. Um, doors have collisions, but not with each other. So that's a thing right there. <laughs> Going into here, we've got our first electrical box. It says net up and down, okay. Look at that. We haven't seen that since Valley of the Old Farm on Farming Simulator 17. Very cool. And if we go here, lights on, boop. We'll turn our lights on. Any animation to the lights? Yeah, we got animations, baby. I love doing that with uh, redstone on Minecraft. It is awesome. So those are your net up and down and that. Well, we've got a couple other things. So let's go ahead and close this up. 
We've got a second door here that we could go through. In and out, no problems. Let's close that up. Here, we've got another door. We could come in here. Uh-oh, big cow. Move over to the side. And then we've got a door here as well. Now, we can close this door, but that's not going to stop any of the animals from coming out the door. For example, this bad boy right here. Let's go ahead and close that door. You can see they don't care one bit. They're going to be coming in and out. So this door does nothing except for stop you. It does not stop the cows. Uh, unfortunately, they're not going to run out either. Food's going to go in there. Straw's going to go over here. You've got your water right here. And that is how you feed them. Otherwise, that is it right there. That is your German cow bar. Of course, as always, stuff like this is going to be found in placeables and in animal pens. It's very cool. I like it. It does place down the grass. You guys know we have dirt everywhere around here. So everything that is not dirt, the texture changes that you see will be placed down. So it goes out pretty far around. Your next mod today for all platforms, V Farmhouse. This is a German farmhouse. Price is going to be 200 grand. Daily upkeep, $150 per day. Season's ready. Snow roof. No snow up there yet. And animated doors as well as a manual light. However, there's only two animated doors, and they're over there. These do not open. You cannot go inside this house. However, you can sleep not only there, but if we go around to the back, there's a back door as well. Boop. And we can sleep there as well. Nowhere else around the house can you sleep. If we go right here, we get a small garage. 2018. A little late for that. And we come in here and we can turn our light on. But otherwise, that is it. Nothing else to this one right here. Naturally, this is going to be found in placeables and in houses. And your last new mod for all platforms today. This is the FS09 Horse Husbandry. This is a horse husbandry farm or stable with the Farming Simulator 2009 style. So if we go in here, we can see this is where we're going to buy our horses. We can only have four. We're going to buy four gray horses. Right in here, this is where you're going to give them their straw. This is where you give them their food, so their hay and their oats. And if we make our way around right here, this is where you're going to give them their water. And again, there's only four. You could fit at least. I've seen horses, horse tables smaller than this with a whole lot more. Uh, I was talking to A-Dub, and he's, he's working on something real, real big right now uh, for animal stuff. And look at that. Even that opens. So that, I think, is the only place that it opens up around. Yep. So uh, he's working on something. I was like, yeah, you know, having a, a placeable where he can have more animals. Like, there's a lot of console players that can't just do 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 and make it have hold whatever you want. And you guys would love, to, I'm sure, to have like a thousand cows. <laughs> you might be have the largest cow food operation ever. But I think something like that would be super cool just to be able to just do it. Is it realistic? Well, maybe. But yeah, not likely. Never mind. <laughs> Moving on to updates. Moving into mod updates. Your very first one is the Kun Satera 3000-4000. Change log 1.1. Added the Satera 4000, which is the 4 meter version of this. And it holds 1,080 liters of seed. And your last update for all platforms today, the Floodlight Trailer. Update 1.1. The two lower lights on the spots now both work. New wear card and new dirt card as well. I never had problems with the lights not working, but I didn't use this after update 1.5.1 either. So I know that broke a lot of the lights in the game. And your new mod for PC and Mac and your last mod today, the global company digital display. This is a placeable display. To change the text, go to the display and press the R button on your keyboard. The small display has one line and is price of $2.5,000. And the display big is going to have six lines of text and it's going to cost you $4,500. Information, this mod is only placeable in combination with the global company mod. Well, guys, that is going to be it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, make sure you drop a like on the video, get subscribed to the channel if you're new, join the Goham fam, and turn those notification bells on so that you never miss a horse on top of a Massey Ferguson. With all that being said, I hope you have a great day, and we will see you later. Peace!